Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is just a quick word. I'm actually recording this after I've recorded the video, so I'd like to put it up and edit it and everything. Um, it's just to say, if I sound a bit sort of downhearted, under the weather, fed up, pissed off, whatever, during sections of this video, um, I am. Uh, and there's various reasons for it. Things have gone wrong. I've done things wrong, which I'll point out what I've done wrong going through. Um, but also, background noise, This doing this video has been the worst I've ever done. Um, you know, football, screaming kids, just a nightmare. So, um, dogs barking a lot. So, uh, if, um, if I do sound a bit downhearted or whatever, don't worry, I'm not going through a middle-age stressing session or whatever. It is just literally becoming very, very difficult to film with all the background noise. So um, you may see less videos coming from me for that reason, uh, especially on weekends and stuff. And when we get into the school holidays, it's gonna be now and impossible, I think. So um, anyway, enjoy and um, don't worry about me. I'm absolutely fine and uh, enjoy the video. Bye for now. Hey man, Nigel here with you again. Another, uh, another video for you today. And a bit of a different angle because I'm aware that usually we get glared at by these bloody lights. And I've trimmed my head as well, so luckily it's not cold today. Um, so today we are going to do a video and we are going to look at fitting all a lot of stuff from uh, Gwyn Lewis over in Wales. So we've got the full Super Pro bush kit. We're going to fit all that into all our suspension arms. I'll show you all that in a minute. We've got the Gwyn Lewis um, A-frame ball joint here, all wrapped up nicely with the bolts here to go in and we've also got the lovely Gwyn Lewis polyurethane boot to go on the uh, ball joint and the lovely Ben who is um, Gwyn Lewis's right hand man he has sent me instructions on how to do that with a cable tie so uh, I'm going to attempt it I've never done it before I'm going to attempt it live on camera for the first time and we'll see how it works but um, more of that in a minute so um, first of all, I'll show you what I've got here on the bench and I'm gonna, I've also been playing with the Mustang a little bit and I'm just going to show you something because anybody that's thinking about painting their brake calipers, this will be an interesting bit of information for you. So uh, let's get to the bench, to the car and whatever. Okay, so there's our trolley with all our arms on and everything. But just before we look at any of that, I just want to talk to you about these brake calipers. Now, this applies to any vehicle on the planet. You can see here I've painted these and they look red to me in this shot, but they're actually orange. And then the front ones, they're huge. Got these great big Brembo six pots on here. You can see there's my hand in front of me. You can see the size of them there. They're massive, but they're um, very, very nice. Now I use the paint from a company called Technic U. And as you can see, if I can get in here, the finish is lovely, very, very shiny. Really lovely finish on them, really, really nice. Could do a better lighting, really, but you can see they're very, very nice. And it's a single pack spray on paint. Now, there is a big problem with this stuff. It tells you to put it on very, very thin and build it up in layers. Now, one of the problems, as anybody who does painting will know, with like yellows and oranges, it takes a lot of coats to cover because the pigment is so small. So, why is it every time I put the camera on the dog box? Anyway, uh, so, so basically, there we go. Biggest issue with this paint, it says on the tin it's resistant to chemicals. So you would assume it's resistant to chemicals involved with the world of brakes. But no, it's attacked by brake fluid and it's attacked by brake cleaner. So um, you have been warned. Now they did say to me that after a while it goes off harder and it's more resistant. Um, but apparently it's not going to be totally resistant to brake fluid or brake cleaner. So. Bear that in mind, you, you can get the Foliatex stuff in cans that you can, it's a two pack you paint on with a brush. That is resistant to everything, I've tried it myself. The only trouble is when you've got horrible cast calipers like these are, you can use that stuff and brush it on and get a nice finish. But when you've got these, like these Brembo's here with the machined face on the front, get the light in there, you can see you've got the machined face on the front there. The, you, you can't get it looking nice with a brush, it's, it's very, very difficult because it's a very thick paint. Anyway, you have been warned, the company's called Technic U. It's lovely, lovely paint. It goes down really well, but unfortunately, be very, very careful. If you strip your calipers to um, paint them like I do, then be very careful when you're reassembling or don't reassemble them for like a week. But um, these I did yesterday, I painted them, what's today, Saturday? I painted them Wednesday and I rebuilt them yesterday. So they had like 48 hours 
and um, didn't get any breakthrough on them, but they're uh, they're okay. So anyway, that's enough about Mustangs. Right, Land Rovers. Here's all our arms, all painted. That's all in the um, Coralus paint. Something I'm starting to discover with this stuff, and if you know different, you can tell me. This um, glass reinforced top coat, the RF16, it goes down, as you can see, it's very, very glossy. You put a primer under it first, it looks very, very glossy, looks very, very nice. Yeah, all lovely and shiny. But when it's left out in the elements, the rain and the sun, it goes dull very, very quickly, in my opinion. So um, let me know what you think. It could just be, I don't know, that I'm doing something wrong, I don't know. But it doesn't seem to hold its shine for very long in that when it's left out in the elements. This, this has all been kept indoors. And I can also see here, I've got some sort of wrinkling or something going on there. Oh well, I'm going to be changing these anyway. Um, I'm going to be getting the Gwyn Lewis radius arms for the back because um, these are um, very, very weak. You can tell by the weight of them, they're very, very weak. Um, but Gwyn Lewis does the heavy duty ones in a straight here or with a swan neck with a crank in them. So I've, obviously I haven't decided yet what sort of size lift I'm going to go for, if I'm going to go for a lift at all. So that's why I haven't bought anything like that yet. Uh, but obviously these arms, they may be replaced if I go for a big lift, but um, I very much doubt I'll be going for anything that's going to need them replacing. We've got our A-fray arms here, all done, ready for the bushes to go in. And here's the panard rod. Now this has still got the original Land Rover rubber bushings in it. The reason I've left them in is twofold. If I go for a lift, I may get an adjustable panard rod. And to be honest, I would like something stronger anyway, because that is a very, very thin, lightweight tube. And it ain't going to take much of a knock to bend it. Um, so therefore, if I do go aftermarket, I can sell this panard rod on with the original bushings in it. Because, I don't know if you know, but if you buy aftermarket bushings for these, the rubber bushings, they're not going to be as good as the originals that wrote Land Rover fitted. So just bear that in mind, which is why I'm going with poly bush in this one. One, because they're easier to fit out in the field. And two, because they're the next best thing from the original rubbers. I did have a Land Rover before. I fitted some poly bushes to it. They were orange ones. I'm not mentioning any manufacturers, but they didn't last very long, but they did vastly improve the ride. So that's why I want to go poly bush. So that's all that, all the shiny black. And what we've got is this full set here from uh, from Gwyn Lewis. And I think it's going to have a number on it. There we go. This is the number. If you've got a late Puma, this is the one you want. Okay. Now there's early Puma and late Puma. And if you look at the Gwyn Lewis website, it tells you all in there what to look for to make sure you're getting the right kit. Because some have got um, the crow's feet on the chassis, which are... That thing there, ain't that lovely? Isn't that lovely? These crow's feet on the chassis, which are underneath here, okay? These are what the um, radius of the frame bars go on. And you can see them on here. These are welded on. Some of them have them bolted on, and then you've also got some with weld on, but then they've got a three-quarter bolt in them rather than a, a 16 mil. So make sure you get the right thing. Um, make sure you get in the right ones if you've got a Puma. There's early and late Puma. So as I say, just look on the Gwyn Lewis website, and it guides you through everything that you need to look for. A couple of quick measurements, so you'll make sure you get the right kit. Uh, and then as I say, we've got this A-frame ball joint here, which is all nicely wrapped up. The bolts to go through the A-frame and the polyurethane rubber. The reason I've got this is because, after, again, um, aftermarket ball joints, the rubbers are not very good. Um, it doesn't matter who you get them from, um, they are not very good. They, they don't last like the original ones did. I've still got all my original arms and everything on the axles and all the balls, all the rubbers are good. But um, the rubbers on the aftermarket ball joints, these things here, don't last five minutes. So. It's best to change them, and Gwyn Lewis sells these separately. I've, I've done a review of these before, and these are basically polyurethane, um, and they should last forever, and they're basically poly boots. So, um, yeah, get those from Gwyn Lewis. He's got, he does them in sets for all your arms and everything. And as I say, we're going to be changing that with a, with a, um, a, a, a what do we call it, a cable tie. Couldn't think of the name of it then. We're going to be changing that with a cable tie. So, and another thing to bear in mind, Gwyn Lewis only sells these as, a, as an assembly now. He doesn't actually sell the ball joint on his own. So, um, and it's also, this one's greasable, so which is, which is a good point. Um, I took mine off, the original one, 16,000 miles, no real off-road work, and it wasn't very good at all. It was very, very floppy, so uh, worth checking yours. Um, you don't want that going when you're on the road. That is really going to ruin your day. So, uh, 
let's get this out of the boxes and let's see how we fit all this. We're going to fit these bushes into those arms and then we're going to fit those arms and the axles that are around the corner into that chassis. Let's get on with it. Right, so in this box we have got lots and lots of pretty bits and pieces. So we have got radius arm to diff mount kit, so I'm going to want that one. We've got the panard rod bush kit, I'm not going to be using that one today. We've got the radius arm to chassis mounts, so that's for the front. Then we've got the Land Rover up arm to chassis. Oh, upper arms to chassis, so that's our upper radius arm, upper um, A-frame arms. Then we've got the lower arm to diff mount bush. This is for the trailing arms for the rear. And then this is the huge bag of bits and pieces with some lovely shiny new washers and everything in the sleeves and all the grease. Um, these are going to go in the chassis. You know where these go. These go in the chassis for the rear radius arms. So we're going to be fitting all that on. So that can go back in the box. That can go back in the box. And then just so you can see what's in here. This is what you get in the kit. Okay, so this is the Land Rover Defender 2007 on Puma Radius Arm and Panard Rod Bushing Kit. And that's what you're getting in there. All that there. And then this is the other bits and pieces you can get from Super Pro. Okay. So there you go. And I'll probably be replacing all the shock rows and everything once I know what I'm doing with, with shocks and stuff. So um, first things first, we'll get these unbagged. And then we'll get them pressed in and I'll do it. I could do it on the press, but I'll show you how to do it in the voice because I know not everyone has a press. Okay, so first of all, we're going to look at the um, fitting these bushes into the trailing arms. We're going to do the bush that goes into the chassis. This is the A-frame arm that goes on the top. You've got the two bolts go through here for the ball joint and then you've got the bush up here. So um, basically what we've got in the kit is we've got the two polyurethane bushes. We've got the two steel sleeves that are going inside. And then we've got the actual Super Pro special grease itself and I would very thoroughly recommend using this because um, one it aids, aids assembly and two it gives you a grease coating in here to prevent corrosion and also it stops some squeaking um, you, you really don't want them to dry because they may start to squeak uh, but uh, plenty in there get it in there you, you can't use too much and just have it all lathered in there and make sure that the um, the, the thing is well lubricated you've got these little um, pockets in here as well which will help to hold the grease so that's pretty cool. So um, let's get to the vise and I'll show you how we're going to get these squeezed in. Right, so we've got the grease here with the top cut off. We've got a bush here, which is all nice and uh, clean. So what I'm going to do is put some grease around this edge of the bush to help it go in, first of all. And then I'm going to put plenty of grease on here so that we know we've got plenty in there when it goes in. And I'm just going to level this out a bit on my finger. Oh, it's very sticky. I'm just going to level this out on my finger a bit to save it all being dragged down to one end. Okay, and then the same round here. Just like so, and that'll help that go in. And I'm also going to put some in here. You get a little sachet of grease with every one, so, so I'm trying to stay in the camera, it's not easy. So, um, stay in front of the camera, should I say. So just get plenty in there so we know that we've got grease coverage in there. Excuse the screaming kids once again. God, it's a joy sometimes living here. Let's just clean my finger off. You do all this nice paintwork and then you cover everything in grease. So we're going to get this in the vise. You can see I've got a piece of cardboard on here to protect the paint because I'm a tart. And um, I'm going to put this in with the grease side first. I'm just going to place that in there like that. Okay. And then we can tighten the vise. And it's all gone off to one side. Just make sure it doesn't do that again. Oh, it's really not working in the vice because um because I've got shitty vice jaws. No, it's not gonna work. Okay, so we'll try it without the aluminium vice jaws. 
I call them aluminium vice jaws. They're basically just pieces of aluminium angle. That, nope, that's not working either. Nope. Okay, let's have a rethink. Okay, so I've just realised I'm putting it on the wrong side. You can see one side doesn't have a chamfer, and one side has a chamfer. So if I try now to put it in this side, where we've got the chamfer, it's all about making mistakes so you don't have to. So we'll put that in there like that, and we'll see if that makes a difference. Wow. I thought this would be a lot easier than this, but clearly <clears throat> it's not. <laughs> this isn't going well at all, is it? I think I'm gonna to have to do it in the press. Okay, a bit of a different setup now. I've got a piece of threaded bar in the vise. It's on a funny angle so that I can rest the bottom end of the arm on the bench. I'm not really sure you can see what I'm doing here, but here we go. You can see it there. Piece of threaded bar in the vise. Nut on there. Large washer on there. Large washer on there. We've got a bush here. Chamfered side up. So let's see how this goes. So let's uh, let's just turn that over. Get that like that. Let's see how it goes. It's probably going to pop to one side, but we shall see. It looks like it might be energising its way in. No, it's popping to one side again. So I'm not quite sure how on earth you're supposed to get these in without them going to one side. Right, so I've got some of the grease in there. I've got some of the grease on the bush. <clears throat> My voice is getting all croaky and squeaky. So I need to count this over a bit. to come over a bit so that it's square. There we go. Let's just nip that in like that. Then we'll get the bush down on the top. Get a piece of aluminium on with our washer and our nut. And this time we're just going to squeeze it in and just keep squeezing. Now I'm not sure if the angle's any good if you can actually see. You can't really see much of what's going on there. Okay, let me change the angle. Okay, so now I think this is basically that's a better angle. This is basically just going to put it. I'm just going to butcher it in. So if it goes on an angle, I'm just going to keep going. There we go. It's gone over an angle. It's come up at the back. So I'm just going to keep going. And it looks like that's not going to work. So I wonder if I give it a belt on the back, if it will go in. If I find something blunt, like a end of a socket extension if it'll go in without what I don't want to do is damage it obviously I don't want to tear it or anything so grab a piece of wood just hit it yep that works just tap it and it goes so that's the thing don't try and be scientific be a butcher so that's obviously the way to make it work. There we go, so that's gone in now. There we are. So we can lift that up over that nut, and then while you're still in the shot of the camera, I hope. That's it, in. Right, so we've got the bushes to go in the centre now. So once again, get plenty of grease um, on these. We're just going to put a little bit on the leading edge and a little bit in the bores because as it goes through, it'll kind of tend to wipe everything off. So we're going to make sure we've got plenty of grease all the way in that bore, like so. There's a fairly rough finish in that bore. I think it's probably intentional to maintain the grease. So we've got to get that in there. 
And once again, this is going to be fun. Once it goes, I think we'll be fine. Go on, there we go. And then we can just give them a tap in like so. And that's it. I'll smear a bit of grease on the ends because that'll help to lubricate them while they're swiveling. The other thing we need to do is this is something that Gwyn advised and if Gwyn advised that I rinse these in two egg yolks and three egg whites before fitting them I would do it. So I've got my good old trusty grease gun. I've got some of this fantastic grease that comes from Gwyn. And I've got a little brush here. I'm going to take some of this grease off and I'm going to put some in this bore. Okay, and I'm going to brush plenty of this grease into this bore all the way down in and make sure it's all the way down through the bore and that will save all your corrosion going forward whoops trouble this bloody laundry everything's so heavy and chunky and i'm sure they could have made it half the weight but then it would have been a toyota and you wouldn't be stripping it and rebuilding it after 10 years <laughs> Okay, so like you can see down in there, I've got grease all the way down inside that tube now. And um, it's, it's messy, it's dirty, yep, but it's going to stop your bolt rusting in there solid. You've all had it where you can't get the bolts out, particularly in the front radius arm. So do that in all the sleeves. Give your bolts a good coat and a grease as well. And that'll make sure that in the future everything will come apart. You could use copper slip, but Gwyn is telling me that he's been using that grease on everything now for a few years. And it's bloody wonderful stuff. So... Right, I'll get the other one in and then we'll look at doing something else. Right, so um, now we're going to do these. These are the uh, radius arm bushes for the lower radius arm bushes to the uh, axle mount. And this is SPF 0129K, you can see there. So um, you can see I've done one because I did it on camera and I've, I've just deleted it because it got out of hand. Uh, so I found an easy way of doing this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a good coating of grease on the inside of the bore here okay and then we can just push this bush in here and that goes in just just put it in just just a few millimeters just about 10 millimeters and this is the where I find this the easiest way to do this and then we're going to get plenty of grease this is still the sachet from the um, a-frame set so we'll get some grease in there get some grease in all these grooves just like so. Give it a quick one round. Make sure the grooves are all filled up. Just like so. And then I'm going to push that in there. Just so it just starts. Here we go. And then I should be able to just push that through. Or just give it a tap off the bench so it doesn't make a noise just tap that in that was not supposed to happen okay so now we've got that one you can see that one that steel tube is sticking out so now you can simply press this bush over that steel tube just like so and then that one will press into this side and if you need to you just stick it up in the vise and squeeze it in and that's that one job done we'll put some of that black grease around the bores of the tubes and then we're good to go Right, so here we go, radius arms. I've done one bush this time so that I can practice before I put it on camera. These go in actually very easily. So what we're going to do is just put this in here. Again, we've got a chamfered side on here and we've got a non-chamfered side. So we'll press it in from the chamfered side. So we're just going to rest this on here. Again, it's an angle so I can put one end down on the bench and the other side just sits on there like that. We'll take our bush, which is all greased up. We've greased the bore and everything. So that's just going to go in like that. Okay, and then take the top plate washer and the nut and we can just wind it in just like so get everything squared up okay so it's all kind of square again because the camera's on it doesn't want to play ball never mind oh it's wearing a bit thin this right so Get that squared up like that. 
Now again, this side's going to go in. My hand's covered in this grease, so it's really hard to pick anything up. This side's going to go in. This one's going to go in. It's going to be all skew with. Okay, so you can see it's going in a bit skew with. So we just put it in like that. Okay, and I'm not going to. I don't want to go too hard because I don't want to rip it. So I've just got a bit of rubber now, a bit of wood, sorry, and I'm just going to tap in the sides and they will start to go in and down. A little bit more pressure. Now you don't want to be using anything sharp to do this because you'll you'll tell you'll tell you'll tear the poly bush. It's going in. Okay, and a bit more pressure. Fly in there now. So basically, when you undo this, you can see that you can push this in by hand. So once it's once the edge has gone over, it's really easy to go in. Okay, so we can just literally push that through by hand. Let's pop out the other side. So I free grease the bore. So I'll take one of my tubes. We'll get some grease on the tube. Okay, then I'm going to place that over there, get that roughly central. What doesn't help with these is because they're the shape of them, they don't want to lay, they don't want to sit flat on their own. So just again, this is really simple. As I say, it would be even easier in the press, but I don't want to keep repeating myself. <coughs> so Just put some pressure on that and it'll pop in. And don't be tempted to undo the nut and just walk away because it goes boom, it just pops back out again. Ask me how I know. So now we can just push this up like this by hand, get that most of the way through. Take the nut off. And then with our mallet, just come along. And just pop that bush through, just like so. And there we go, that's it all done. We'll smear that grease that's on there around. Can't do any harm. And then we'll uh, grease up the bores and get the other two in. And there we go, is this by magic? It's all done. <laughs> nah, yeah, that was a nightmare. Um, but basically it was a nightmare because putting the, put the camera on that's that's the problem you're working around the camera and it's just absolutely sods all as soon as you turn the camera on things start going wrong but um there we go it's, it's a dog you can see i did all that i mean these were done with a uh, with a vice um these were done sorry these were done with a vice and a threaded bar as were the a-frame ones here there and there they were done as you as you saw so you don't need any special tools but that was a bit of m10 threaded bar and a couple of m10 nuts and that was it job done so let's get to the bench and have a look at this ball joint. So um, as I was saying, this is what you get from Quinn Lewis, the, the, um, the ball joint with the grease nipple and you've got the, uh, the rubber on there. But basically, apparently these rubbers are not the best quality, so it's best to um, replace them. So um, as I say, Ben, who is Quinn Lewis's right hand man, uh, sent me this and showed me how to do it with the uh, with a cable tie. So I'm going to try and show you now. So first of all, we're going to get a screwdriver, okay, small screwdriver, up under this bottom clip. He says, and we're going to try and get that get underneath that bottom clip and just lift it up. As I say, this is what makes life so difficult is having the camera. If I could just do this on the bench, you know, in front of my face, it would be easy. So we've got a screwdriver under there now. Okay, so we hold that like that. OK, 
okay and then we get this our cable tie which is done up put that underneath there he says get that underneath I don't know if you can see what I'm doing there we go we've got the cable tie as a screwdriver fell out so that was lucky so we've got the cable tie underneath there so if we pull up with the cable tie while we <laughs> Oh, we do that, and that's the first time I've ever done that. So that's it, that's on, that's off. So now we can just pull that rubber boot off. We can pick our screwdriver up off the floor and not the camera at the same time. And then we kind of just lost the cap now off the bleed nipple, off the grease nipple. So we can get the screwdriver under here now, lift that up, get it up over the lip, just like so. And there we are. And that's it okay so we don't need to put any more grease into the um into the board joint yet we can do that afterwards so we're just going to slide this down now over the top and this is the polyurethane one so i think what will actually help is if we put some grease on the inside here okay clean our fingers off that will help that go over that lip a bit easier just get that over that lip just like so there we go and I've managed to scoop out a load of grease there so we're going to wipe that off because otherwise everything's just going to stick to it let me clean this up and then I'll come back and I'll show you how we put them back on okay so that's on I forgot to say as well that that ring that steel ring on the top there pop that in before you put the uh, rubber on uh, you can't get it on afterwards ask me how I know uh, so right, I've just watched the video by Ben again, and um, all you do is put the cable tie into here like this, and you you grab in the bottom there. And I'm going to try and show you this on video. It's not going to be easy, but basically what he's done is just pull the bottom into the. No, I think we're going to have to pull it. Put it over first so it goes into there we go so we're into the second area so now we're going to pull the pull the bottom rig into the lower groove like so okay so we're just pulling that bottom ring in now this is not easy because they've got the bolts in the way which you don't have on a ball joint they've got a track rod end but i'm just pulling this down Pulling it down in as you can see there. Just keep on pulling it down. And there we go, it's on. <laughs> there we go. So uh, hopefully you saw what I did there. I just literally pulled it down and around. But it's very difficult to hold it in front of the camera and see what I'm doing and watch what the camera's looking at and all at the same time. So there we go. So we just pop that washer and that nut back on there. So that's our Gwyn Lewis. And I'll pop some more grease in there now just to uh, just to make sure and um, probably put a bit of grease around here as well just to make sure we get a good seal stop any water going in there so um, there we go I might put the A-frame next together next if you have got a Puma uh, and you get a board joint you may as well get the bolts these are the bolts that come with the Puma these are 10 years old um, and sort of fairly well looked after and these the, these are the new ones you get now, Gwyn's sending you Imperial bolts. These are um, UNF by the look of it. So, uh, look at here. So, half inch UNF. Let's just have a quick look with a very near. Yeah. So, so they're half inch UNF. The stainless steel washers are my addition. You don't get them with it. And um, they're just going to go through. They do still fit through the holes. You can see how much smaller these bolts are than these. So, um, and they're nylocks. And they're both nylocks as well. So, uh, Nice touch, we'll put some grease on these threads, we'll put some grease on the bolts. We've already greased up the boards of the A-frames and we'll put some grease in these boards here as well. So there we go, we'll get that all assembled. Okay, so we've got our bolts in now. And as you can see, they're all greased up. I've greased the boards of everything. All these are greased, I've put some grease on these faces. All the boards are greased, the bolts are greased, the threads are greased. Everything has got this grease on it so that we can um, keep out the water and keep away corrosion. So you just slide that over there like so. Okay, so that's going to go in like that. And then the grease going out of the way, and then we're going to grab our other arm. Over here. 
and we can put this one on just like that and then I'm going to grab my stainless steel washers again these aren't part of the Gwyn Lewis kit they are what I've added and then we'll just put these nuts on and I'm not going to tighten these up I'm going to nip them up but I'm not going to tighten them right up because um, I want to allow a bit of play and flexibility for fitting it all together so do is we'll get a we'll get a ratchet on there now and I would imagine probably an 18 millimeter spanner will fit. Now they're gonna be 19 so well, they're gonna be three quarter aren't they? So I've got a three quarter ratchet spanner here and we'll grab another three quarter spanner which is come on to prepare it again as you can see 7 8 13 16 8 here's an old three quarter it's not the one i was looking for so i don't know where that one's gone and then we'll just spin these nuts on as i say we'll just they're not even nipped up, they're just, you know, a few a few turns away from being done up. And that way we've got plenty of movement and floppiness to fit that up into the chassis. So the next thing now is going to be to get all this into the chassis and on the axles and everything. And we've got to put some grease under here as well. And uh, so next to us, you'll be back in here, and this this thing here will be out of the way, and we'll have a Land Rover chassis in place of it. So uh, I'll see you a few seconds for you, probably tomorrow for me. Alrighty, guys, here we go. Chassis is now up on the uh, Raddock, brilliant uh, car lift thingy. And you can see I've got my these are my steel gate posts. I'm making new gates throughout the front of the house, and. Um, yeah, so I've used the steel gate posts to go across because this Land Rover chassis is just so narrow they sort of just fall between the um, between the cracks as it were. So uh, we've got some rubber pads on there to protect the paint. We've got it lifted up. The um, you can see that the A-frame there is all loose. We've got these uh, arms on now, fitted to the front axle. All these bolts are all greased up and everything. The nuts, as you can see, are scabby old nuts. I'm going to buy new nuts. So I'm making a list at um, one of the suppliers, Paddocks or Credits. Uh, basically every time you make an order it's like five pounds postage so what i'm doing is just adding to the list and then when i've got a, a box full of greenpeace i'll uh, i'll order it because it doesn't matter if you order one nut or you know 150 nuts it's the five pound postage so uh that's what i'm doing another thing i meant to say this um this track rod that is the old one the only reason it's on there is because i've used these jubilee clips these um clamps to keep the um to keep the steering straight and obviously I've got the new sumo bars from um, from Gwyn Lewis to go on there. But I didn't want to go scratching it all up and taking the plating off. So there we go. So uh, I've got to get this um, this rotisserie off now and then um, go from there. Okay, moving forward here, you can see we've got our um, front radius on bush kit now. This is SPF 206K. There's the number for you there. And if you look at these, you'll see we've got two of these plain bushes. These are marked 22. And then we've got... Well, these are also marked 22, but there's a number on the back. We've also got two of these bushes with a groove in them. You can see there's a there's a relief in them there. And these go to the axle side, so they go on forward, and then these go on the back. And then your washer goes on the back, and then your nut goes on there. So um, that's the way they go around. So all we've got to do with these, I don't need to show you fitting them, is just put some grease around the inside, push them over the end of the radius arms, which are over here now. You can see there's the axle with the radius arms fit the chassis all the way up here. And um, basically, we'll just do that and then we'll slide them into place on the axle. I've also got to fit these spring uh, seats, which I should have done before, but uh, forgot about. So uh, let me get that done and then I'll be back. Okay, so we've got the um, the front arms in now. 
and all the nuts are done up just loosely. Again, I'm going to be buying new nuts for these. Everything's all in all greased up and lovely in, in there. So that's that. I just take these um, orange ramps off the uh, these things here um, because the wheelbase is so short. So kind of wish I had a 110 at the moment. Kind of out of breath because I've just been uh, fitting this, which is a nightmare. I should have done it on rotisserie with the chassis upside down. But uh, my tip is rather than try and use nuts and bolts, I've just got a couple of bits of bar in there so you can sort of locate it and get it in place and then funnel about with your bolts and everything afterwards but again they're all gonna have to be greased and everything um i did go over this morning and give this a quick coat of paint so this is all sealed in with some fresh gloss black paint so uh that's looking good we've got the rear axle there ready to go on i've got to put the spring seats on that one and um, clamp the springs in at the same time and uh should be good to go so let's get this show on the road i've also got these over here these are the front radiator mounts for the chassis Oops. and you've got it's all all new so you get new washers new plates and everything and obviously it all needs to be greased up and needs to put some black grease down those bores they're an easy sliding fit over the um over the radius arms so that's all okay um that's the captive nuts you get with the puma for the inner end of those um the a-frame so this is all going to go on now and then they're going to bolt it all onto the chassis obviously grease or wax or whatever in behind here so uh, yeah, wish me luck. I'll see you in a, a bit of a follow on with these. Um, you've got these bolts. They don't. You don't get new bolts with the set, but you get these bolts um, with your Land Rover chassis when you buy your Land Rover. Um, so they're all greased up. Remember to grease up under the head, because remember that people always put grease on the bottom and then they wind the nut up and think that's going to take the grease. But there's an area here, probably six, ten mils long, it gets no grease. So remember to make sure you keep the grease up under the head. Um, and that will sort of help to seal it in as well and keep the moisture out of that gap. Um, and also with these great big washers, you can see there's a chamfer on one side and not on the other. Make sure when you put this on the trailing arm, on the radius arm, it goes that way. So if the wheel is to your right, make sure it goes that way because that is to clear the radius on the inside of the end of the radius arm. I've got one here I can show you actually. Here it is here. So it goes, it goes this way on, the chamfer on, because you've got a radius in here okay so make sure you do that uh, again everything's going to be greased up we've greased up the bores um we'll grease up the radius arms um all these bolts in here, in here now for the a-frame that's supported on that end which made it a lot easier they're all greased up nothing's torqued um, one of the things to remember with these bushes a the good thing is when you get a situation like this like these here or on the other end of the radius arms doesn't really matter on any of these here it matters on the panel rod if you're using rubber bushes, make sure you don't torque anything up until your vehicle sat on the ground at the right level. Otherwise, what happens is you, you torque up everything in its unloaded state. And then when it's loaded, it's all twisted and it can rip the bushes out eventually. And you just put an unnecessary preload in there. So but with these, because they turn, the, the, the steel will turn within the bush. It doesn't matter. You can torque everything up and it will just slide around. And that is the beauty of these. You're not with the rubber, you've got kind of, you know, you're sat here in normal and then you get increasing load as you go that way and increasing load as you go that way. Whereas with these, it's just all twisting. So um, that is one of the beauties of polyurethane bushes, as long as they're good quality and Super Pro are. So um, I'm going to get these on now. Uh, as I say, all these bolts are greased up. Get it all together and we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm going to put these spring seats back together now. Now this is the original spring pan. As you can see, wax sword in behind, wax sword on top of there. So that's all protected from rust. Then we've got a couple of washers go on here. These are asking the spacers. So they're going to go in there, like so. Then the coil spring, I've marked all these springs with a notch in the top here to um, denote which one's which, because on a lot of older Land Rovers, all four springs are different. Now, this one, they appear to just be sided, so uh, not to worry too much on a Puma, I guess. So we're going to drop the spring on there. I am using these original springs for now. Um, I'm going to be changing them when I decide what I'm doing, but I don't know what I'm doing yet. So I just, I'll just give them a clean and we'll put them back on as they are. Um, now I need to get this spring positioned correctly so I don't bend this bracket. This is actually what holds the rear spring in place. So we'll put that back on there nice and square. So we'll get the spring, there we go. I'm going to have it about there. You've got to get it right so that this bracket isn't sort of hanging around up in the air too much. There we go. That looks like where it was before. So we'll just get a bolt down inside. Make sure we get all those washers. 
that's that. Remember all the bolts are greased, make sure everything's well greased. Wax oiled and everything, you can't go too far with it. There we go, so that's lined up and then we just put a nut underneath. And tighten them down with the uh, spanners. So there we go, the other nut's fallen. There's not a lot of room under here, so uh, there we go. And you can see now how it's worth just cleaning everything and painting everything, everything, everything nice. It makes it so much more enjoyable to work with. So I'll tighten them down and then we'll get the axle underneath the chassis. And there we go, guys, finally done. Back on its wheels. And what a nightmare. If it could go wrong, it went wrong. I've used the old top hat retainers here. I haven't put the new ones in purely because it's just going to be sat out here for a while. I, I, I want to get some protective paint on the uh, windowless ones. They are um, plated, but you know, you never know. Plate, plating can be quite thin, so I just want to give them some sort of protection. Um, as I say, old springs are in there. Probably won't be using them, but they're just they're there for it to be sat on now. So yeah, I had a bit of a nightmare again altogether. Um, I did this wrong. Really, you should put these on the arms before you put them in the chassis, and I did it the wrong way round. So that was a nightmare. That engine, the um, lift was a hindrance. Um, I've managed to scratch the axle here after all that lovely paint. So I have to touch that up. I've probably scratched the front of the tank guard as well. So we'll have to um, just touch all that up. Um, yeah, this thing, this thing's been a hindrance. Um, these ramps are too wrong. It's too wide for a Land Rover chassis. So yeah, it's been a real nightmare using this. I had to take all four ramps off in the end because they were getting in the way of the wheels when it was lifted up. So um, yeah, it's, I should have just got out of the way and used my little red trolley. Where is it? Where's my little red trolley gone? It's over here somewhere. There it is. Little red trolley there. I should have used that one uh, as I did before. And it would have all gone together lovely, but um, I think I've got that thing on as we use it. But uh, no, pain in the ass. So we've got the old rotisserie there, so we'll take that apart now and stash that away. And uh, there we go. So, um, call that a day for this one. Don't know if you can tell in my voice, I'm really pretty fed up to be honest. I'm going to go and have a couple of pints. It's my birthday tomorrow, and um, apparently the weather's going to be crap. So, get this one put away, that one, and uh, then this one can stay out in the weather. See you all soon, guys. Bye for now.